Okay, good morning. Good morning for everyone who came from a different parts of the world to be a part of this wonderful event from the Purina Institute, Companion Animal Nutrition Summit. My name is Natalia Wagemans. I'm leading the Purina Institute that has a headquarters in San Luis in Missouri in the United States. But we are very happy to be here in the in Switzerland, in the heart of Nestle, because Purina is the incremental part of Nestle company that is a company number one about the good food, good health, and caring for the people and planet uh, everywhere. So before we start a program, I would like to give you a couple of words about the Purina Institute. I absolutely sure that you know what is the Purina Institute, that we are the global professional organizations that shares science on nutrition with healthcare professionals in veterinary space around the globe. What is important to know about the Purina Institute that we are not talking about commercial products or any uh, commercial claims behind the products. What we are sharing with uh, you and with people around the globe, it's groundbreaking research about evidence science in pet health and nutrition. Because our main mission is advanced science for pet health. We are doing that in very different ways to achieve our goals because we would like to have a very active conversation with you to know from you and share what we know about the pet nutrition. So we're connecting the most innovative minds in the world. And where they are? They are in academy, they are in the main institutions and organizations about the pet health and nutrition, and they are in industry, because we are two big hubs that really have the common goal, to understand what is the most important for pet health, and we're absolutely sure that nutrition is a big part of that. We are partnering with the global thought leaders or key opinion leaders, expert opinions like you who are present now in the room, but also we have over 2,000 people around the globe who is watching this event now online, because for the first time in the history, we uh, transmit this information in a virtual space online that more people will be able to benefit from this knowledge. As I said, we are sharing groundbreaking research, not only from Purina, because Purina is, is a great pioneer in a lot of research milestones in pet nutrition and pet health, but also from the wider scientific community around the globe. And that's because we would like to facilitate the knowledge exchange, and the most important, facilitate the nutrition conversation. Because if we don't talk, that nobody knows that. And as I said, Purina is, is really, Purina Institute is representing the Purina research, and we are part of the big scientific research and development community. We have over 500 scientists around the globe. We represent it in five continents with the different research and development facilities. So we have, if we put together, we have more of 100 years of, of research and 500, more than 500 papers published, and also see how many patents, 1,700 patents that have been uh, granted or uh, pending a granting, so we have at the Purina Research. And what is the most important? That Purina is not only a Purina as a small company, we're part of Nestle. And that gives us a great possibility to tap into the fantastic research ability of Nestle in different areas of pet, and human health, because at the end of the day, we are talking about one health, because we absolutely believe that pets and people are better together. And with this, I have a great pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Ryan Carvalho, who is the head of Nestle Research. He is here, he is a medical doctor, he's a gastroenterologist, and for the past 10 years, Dr. Carvalho, he had multiple leadership functions, mostly in Nestle Nutrition, but also he had an, um, a, 
positions in academia in a higher state university. He is member of the North American Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition, and also the American uh, Academy of Pediatrics. He's a uh, very renowned speaker who is invited in different parts of the world, and uh, he is a highly published person with different articles and contribution to the textbooks. He got his medical degree from Bombay, and then he moved to the United States, where, where he was getting his residency in New York and clinical fellowship on um, uh, pediatric gastroenterology and nutrition at John Hopkins University. And uh, he has MBA, but what I didn't know about Ryan, because I know Ryan for many years, that he is outside of his work, he's also a writer of the non-professional books, and he was, that was inspired by his parents. Ryan, please come on the stage and tell us about the Nestle research. I should have had the slide when I was trying to find a wife years ago. It would have made it so much easier. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And it's a pleasure to welcome all of you to Nestle Research. And together with Natalia and the Purina Institute, it is a warm welcome that we extend to all of you here and online. It is our pleasure to have you here today. Nestle Research is a place where we want to drive discoveries that together with the scientists here and their research collaborators have one goal, to improve the lives of people, pets, and ultimately the planet. So to share with you a little bit about Nestle research, I just wanted to walk you through some of the way we organize ourselves to actually meet that goal of healthier lives for people, pets, and the planet. We have five core institutes. We have the Nestle Institute of Food Safety and Analytics, which really focuses on developing newer methodologies when we want to test for things like contaminants or novel ingredients in different food or product matrices. What they also work on is developing newer methodologies that help further the science to help us better understand what's really in the various foods that we consume and that we feed our pets. The Institute of Health Sciences really focuses on understanding the mechanisms and models of health across ages and life stages for people and pets. The Institute for Food Sciences really focuses on understanding food in greater detail, the complexity of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats when they're mixed together and the importance of understanding what's the right nutrients and what's the right micronutrient combinations to include in the various food matrices to help them from a bioaccessibility and a bioavailability perspective. We have the Institute of Packaging Sciences. This is one of the newer institutes at Nestle Research, which really focuses on understanding newer packaging materials, be it paper or monomer plastics, to really help make a difference in the ways everybody looks at packaging to drive a better and more sustainable planet. And the most recent institute, which we talked about over a year ago and just inaugurated three weeks ago, is the Nestle Institute of Agricultural Sciences. Part of those labs sit just below us. The Nestle Institute of Agricultural Sciences was really set up because we know that when you want to make a difference in the lives of people, pets, and the planets, you have to take a systems approach. Whether it's a systems approach to biology or whether it's a food systems approach, we now work with the Nestle Institute of Agricultural Sciences across plant sciences, animal, dairy, livestock sciences, and agricultural systems to know right from the source of where these ingredients come from, can we make a difference with good research to drive an agenda with collaborators that helps us reach our net zero ambitions to make the world a better place. In addition to the five core institutes, we also have certain centers that focus on various ways that we bring discoveries, collaborative research to life through either products, services, or tools. And to enable that, 
we have three individual complementary knowledge units. The first is the accelerator. The accelerator was a way we challenged ourselves to actually be better, faster, be first, be right, be credible. It's a great way where it's a hub where we work with various startup companies, either startup companies that are actually independent or part of university collaborations where in working with them, we share our know-how and expertise in developing products, in developing services, in developing tools to actually bring these startups to life. The clinical research unit really focuses on running clinical trials as well as hosting a biobank where we actually look at what did we not know in the past that we can restudy today for a better tomorrow? At Nestle Purina, we have a little bit of a hub, which is based in St. Louis, Missouri, which is headed by Pascal, who's sitting right there, so you can always talk to him more about it, which is to actually globalize our Nestle research footprint, like we have in St. Louis. We also have in Singapore, Beijing, and in India. So a little bit of what we do. Fundamentally, at Nestle Research, we focus on the basics. We focus on food safety and quality. We always say that good food only becomes good nutrition if you eat it. And so taste and aroma are key enablers of that. We focus on nutrition and health, which is a very foundational part of what we do. We know that in a world that has really changed a lot over the last three years, there's a lot of people whose lives have changed and the amounts that they can spend and invest in their food and nutrition has changed. And affordability has always been a priority at Nestle Research and at the Nestle Group, but we focused a lot more in recent times as we see the changing face of the consumer and their needs. And finally, sustainability. The Institute of Packaging Sciences and the Institute of Agricultural Sciences are our big investments to actually do the research that's necessary to understand what does it really mean, what really works, and how is it deployed. Innovation is a key focus, but we focus more on discovering scientific discoveries that help drive applications and products, tools, or services. The four key areas that we focus on are alternative proteins. We know there's a big growing consumer demand, but to do it right is important. So alternative proteins is a key innovation focus area for us. Coffee and coffee systems is another area where we continue to grow, but really focus on what is the technology that needs to change. We focus on early life and therapeutic nutrition because we know that if we want to drive change in the ecosystem of the planet, you have to start early. Finally, science-based pet nutrition, which I can pretend to talk to you about, but being among the least knowledgeable people about this in this room, I will humble myself and leave it to the rest of the speakers coming on after me. And finally, I wanted to share that we've realized decades ago that to make a difference, it takes a village. And we work a lot with research partners, collaborators, universities, startups, organizations all over. And one of the significant milestones which has really come up in pet microbiome research is the partnership between Nestle Purina Pet Care Global Research and the GI Lab at Texas A&M, and you'll hear a lot more from Jan later on today. This is the way we grow. This is the way we work together and collaborate with researchers, healthcare professionals, much like yourselves and all over the world to actually understand how together we all make a difference. As I thank all of you today, I sort of wanted to end with two messages. One is, as a pediatric gastroenterologist, I've always been on one side of the fence understanding how pets can make a difference in child's and children's lives whether it be teaching them new skills, whether it be engaging with them in different ways, so at the end of the day, just increasing their happiness index. These things matter. I've learned recently on how humans make differences in pets' lives, and that's key as well. So as I thank all of you today, I really wanna end with two messages. 
that in this crazy chaotic world where we've just come out of COVID, where there's a lot of disruption, war, economies are turning around, the message I want to leave all of you with is a gratitude that all of you here are here today because you dare to care. To care for pets, to care for the people that look after them, and to care for each other. So I encourage all of you to take the learnings from today, collaborate, build a better world today for a better tomorrow so that we leave behind a better generation and a better planet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. It's very inspirational, and it's, it's a great start of the Companion Animal Nutrition Summit, where today we are going to talk about advances in comparative geroscience. This is a topic maybe not very common in, um, in veterinary world, uh, but this is something which is coming to to the life of everyone. Why we are talking about comparative? Because as we said, we live in the same world, people and pets. We are going through the different processes and stages in our life, and very well possible that a lot of mechanisms underlying in the different processes, they could be similar or maybe different. And the one of the big goal of the CAN Summit today to start to share and to start to understand where we can learn from pets to people and from people to pets and animals back. And that's why today you will see um, not only veterinarians in this room, but you will see also people who has no maybe any relation to the veterinary world, but who are working in this area of geroscience and the mechanism that potentially, when we know that, we may manage better to delay the onset of unnecessary uh, stages of, of our life. So the CAN Summit is composed of four sessions. We will be busy with you two days from the morning till the evening talking about geroscience and what we know and what we don't know. And uh, each half of the day will be dedicated to the different topic. So we start this morning with a comparative perspective in health span with the chairperson, Nicole Eckhart, and I will give you a little bit information about Nicole later. Then we move to the microbiome, and Ryan already said the microbiome is a very, very, very important organ that is really managing and influencing almost everything in our body. So Dr. Jan Sokadolski will lead the session, the microbiome, the gut, and the brain function. Moving to the day tomorrow, we will start a, a, another, another, on another planet, kind of being in the first session in the morning with Donald Palmer in immunosenescence, the impact of immunity on age. Who could think about that, that we are aging because of immunity or immunity is changing because we are aging? So Dr. Uh, Donald Palmer and, uh, and speakers in his group will share with us what we know about that. And then in the afternoon, it's last session, but it's definitely not the least. It's a mitochondria and the metabolic determinants of aging and longevity with uh, Michelangelo Campanella. Because if you don't have mitochondria working well, that, that is a main energetic station of our, of our body, then what's happened? So that's, I'm really looking forward to this fascinating uh, two days of the scientific discoveries. And um, with this, I have a great pleasure to introduce a chair of the first session today, Dr. Nicole Ehart. So she's a director of Colorado State University Columbine Health System Center for Healthy Aging.
She's a full professor in clinical science in the same university. Ross Wilkins, uh, MD Limb Preservation Foundation University Chair in Moscow Skeletal Biology and Oncology. And I have to say, uh, when the first time I, make, I met Nicole, I was very much impressed that th th at least the past 20 years she really dedicated to research on oncology, the, the, uh, what's happening after very destructive surgical uh, uh, operations and and what's happened with the muscles and that's how uh, how basically Nicole can say you later how she came to start to think about this uh, aging processes so she's joint faculty position at Colorado State University School of Biomedical Engineering cell molecular biology program and Colorado Gates Gener Regenerative Medicine Center and Colorado Cancer Center she's actively engaged in translational aging research as well as regenerative medicine and a cancer research. So with this, um, I'm moving to the Jan Suhadolski, who is going to, to start in the afternoon. That I think in the veterinary world, everybody knows Jan Suhadolski, but I take a minute to introduce him. So he got a veterinary degree from the University of Veterinary Medicine in Vienna, Austria. The PhD in veterinary microbiology, Young God from Texas A&M University, is board certified in immunology by American College of Veterinary Microbiologists, professor and associate uh, director at GI Lab at the Texas A&M University, very highly published, over 340 uh, peer-reviewed manuscripts in the field of veterinary gastroenterology and microbiome, and as, as uh, Ryan Carvalho said, Jan now is Purina Petke and Dow Chair for Microbiome Research at the Texas NM uh, GI Lab. So Donald Palmer, Chair of the Session uh, 3 uh, tomorrow, Associated Professor of Immunology at Royal Veterinary College, University of London, Honorary Senior Lecturer uh, in Immunology in Imperial College in London, Visiting Lecturer at Cambridge University and University of East London, published over 50 research manuscripts and written chapters in several books, and he is very known in education and career uh, secretary of the British Society of, for Immunology. And he is heavily involved in the education process um, uh, of the students. And the last, Professor Michelangelo Campanella, internationally recognized as an expert in cell biology and pharmacology of mitochondria. So this, this is a mitochondria celebrity in the world. And, um, First, to characterize the physiology of molecular mechanisms which control the mitochondrial consumption of ATP and physical contact between mitochondria in nucleus with defined strains response. Oof, that's already a heavy start. So, Paul Harris Fellowship, Rotary Foundation in 2014, Talented Young Italian Award in 2015, Consolidator Award by European Research Council in Life Science in 2018. I think with this, I'm, I'm ready to give the stage to Nicole to kick the program. Thank you very much.